The Scientist by Coldplay. We're doing something different in this tutorial. I'm going to show you two recommended ways that we can play this song because we're in the key of D minor, which is not a guitar friendly key. So a capo would be the best way to go, in my opinion, to keep as many open strings ringing out as possible and to make this sound great. So the first way we're going to go for is with uh, kind of bar chord shapes and in the guitar key of E major. Nobody said it was easy. said it would be this hard. The second way we're going to try is with a capo at the 5th fret and we're going to be in the key of C major with the chords A minor, F and C. Importantly, the result is always the same. In both of these situations, we are in the key of D minor relative key of F. That's what it sounds like. But we're just using a capo to make it as simple as possible to play, but also to get that sound of open strings. The capo first fret is a little bit more advanced. The capo fifth fret version is a bit more beginner friendly. So let's start there, nice and simple. Capo at the fifth fret, and we have the chord A minor, Standard way of playing A minor, nothing clever here. We're then going to go to an F, which I'm going to recommend we play like this. Actually keeping that thinnest string ringing out, but we move that middle finger. This is basically an E major chord up one fret, or like an F bar chord, but with the first finger where it would normally be. That's a great way to think about it. So it's not a bar chord, importantly. And we're doing that to keep the sound of the open strings and to make it simpler to change from the A minor to the C chord with the final chord being a C sus2 sometimes just called a C sus A minor F C C sus the more intermediate or higher level version uh, would be with a capo at the first fret um, and we're pretending we're kind of in the key of E or the key relative minor key of C sharp minor, but we're not playing any bar chords again, importantly. What I'm recommending is we make the most of these beautiful open strings, the thinnest two strings, and we actually play a power chord at the fifth fret. So root notes, the same as when we had a capo at the fifth fret, it's still on that string five. But we're just gonna play a power chord, one, three, and four, fingers one, three, and four. Keep everything ringing out not playing string six, A major, and E major. Relatively simple there. The tricky chord is the same chord we were playing here, that same power chord shape, but at the second fret, relative to that capo, one, two, and we're actually going to keep that thickest string ringing out. This is an E sus two. Remember we played C sus two before? This is an E sus two. And that sounds like one, two, three, four. One more time. And. Importantly, neither of those is better than one or the other. All we're doing is putting a song that was written on piano and primarily played on piano on to guitar. And therefore, there's always going to be little things that we can add, but ways that it's going to sound better on a guitar as well. We could do it without a capo and just play D minor, B flat and F. But then we're kind of barring all the time and we've got no open strings. And open strings have a different sound to them rather than a fretted note. Compare these two notes. Finish the string and then the fifth fret on the B string. They do have a different tone to them, a different quality to them. Nice and bright open string. A little bit duller and perhaps warmer, um, you know, thicker string when we're at the fifth fret because it is a thicker string. But when we put those together, we have the chime of the thinnest strings and then the warmness of the fretted notes. So that's why this is a bit of a higher level version. And I encourage you to experiment with those essentially four chords, see which way you prefer and see what you would add to it. The strumming pattern, no matter which way you go for, is essentially an eight strumming pattern with one up. So uh, strumming down eight times to a count of one and two and three and four and, 
and then we add one quick up strum at the end. Whichever strumming pattern, whichever chord progression, sorry, you're going for is the same strumming pattern. Three, four. <laughs> So I'm now going to give you a demo of how we can do this both ways nice and slowly but with just a little bit of singing so you know where we are in the song. Starting off with the easier one, capo fifth, play along with me uh, but if anything doesn't work you're just going through those basic open chords and just pull the strumming back to being on the beat or even once per chord because all of these chords are very learnable and it should only take hopefully just a few minutes to get them under your fingers to be able to strum them once but do join in with me there's a power to doing this this is what we're working towards in this particular lesson so from the top two three four <laughs> for that same thing but with the chords that we use with a capo at the first fret essentially the key of E relative minor key C sharp minor uh, but everything is actually in the key of D minor because we're using that capo to change the key three four <laughs> Back to the star. 
Thank you for checking out this video. Here's a link to a couple of tutorials that I think would be really appropriate for you at this level and that I think you'll enjoy. Check out more songs on my Andy Guitar YouTube channel or the Andy Guitar website and app. And I will see you there.